order to have relaxed control of your right hand, you will check that the arm and the shoulder are stable. If you think of your right hand like a paintbrush, the stroke can be considered the top of the paintbrush and your arm like the handle. The top of the paintbrush and the handle. The tip joint of the brush needs to be flexible to create different shapes as we do with creating different sounds. Our handle must be relaxed but secure in order to have control of the resulting brush stroke as should your arm and shoulder. Check for excess tension because any excess tension will come through with the result. First, let's start with exploring the different components of the finger and how each contribute to the creation of sound color. Any rest or free stroke will begin from the base knuckle and follow through with the mid knuckle and lastly the tip joint. The amount of flexion determines the type of sound you will get and how long it will take to produce it. The final preparation of the nail to the string is critical for controlling that sound. Here are examples of long, medium, and short flexion of the tip joint. First with rest strokes and then with free strokes. I will be doing this exercise first on the first string and then will be moving my way down to the lower strings to feel the difference from each string width. First, I will start with a long flexion of the tip joint. That should result in a sweet and round sound. First with I, then M on each string. same exercise but now with a medium flexion which is what I consider my neutral amount of flexion for my default sounds. Lastly, a fast flexion will change the result of the sounds, which might make it more intense, more lively and energetic. see it's almost like I can achieve tosto to ponticello sounds without actually changing my right hand position. All I have to think about is the speed at which I am plucking as well as the flexion of the tip joint. I'd like you to go and experiment in the practice room and see how much are your tip joints flexing. For the next demonstration we will see how that sort of flexion will work on canvas. Now let's take a look at what a long flexion looks like. And a medium flexion. And a short flexion. I didn't change the weight of my brush stroke nor the speed, just the actual speed of attack, which leads to the intensity of the stroke. The more flexion the stroke has, the rounder the sound, but the more time it will take. As you can see, this is clearly demonstrated, it goes from short, longest, to 
medium, and that's definitely the shortest. Okay, so the fast flexion takes the shortest amount of time, but gives a different result when it comes to the time and sound. A completely firm tip joint, however, will create a harsh sound and tense stroke. It's impossible to use a hard paintbrush to get all the subtleties required for sound creation. Here's from a project where I didn't wash my paintbrush and the paint is still embedded in there, making this very hard. If I try to do anything different with this, that's basically all I can do. But if you hear, I have to scrape on the canvas to actually get this to come out. So instead, okay, you always need to have a little bit of flexion. As you can see, color is the most intense at the beginning, just like a sound on the guitar. Most intense, and then it decays. So use your color wisely. Combining different colors and plucking speeds with varying articulation provides a wide array of phrasing options. Each have their own effects in re relation to end result, time, and the amount of effort. Our next demonstration will also be with open strings since I really want to concentrate on the right hand and developing that focus and technique there instead of having to worry about any sort of shifting with the left hand. So now instead of rough strokes, we will be doing this with free strokes. We are expanding it from the speed of the actual flexion of the tip joints to the full pluck itself. Are you going slow through, medium, or fast? That in combination with different articulations will give you so many options. So let's take a look, shall we? Now we will play free strokes with a slow follow through. Soft, sweet, gentle sound. Let's have more of that mezzo medium follow through, starting with the eye finger. As you can see, the dynamic was increased without me changing the weight of the actual stroke. So changing the speed can excite the string. Last but not least, we will be trying a fast follow through. Musicians often refer to sound in different colors or talk about having round sounds, but if you really think about it, it's quite an abstract concept. Music doesn't have physical form when it's created with their instruments, but we as people relate color to memory, emotions, and so many aspects of our lives that we do visualize music in a lot of different ways. One of the most beautiful parts of the guitar are the different colors you can create and therefore the different emotions you can bring to your music. For our first demonstration, we will explore Tosto to Ponticello positions. Notice that each position with the right hand sound will change as you change left hand positions. I'm going to play three contrasting positions with the right and left hands to compare them. This is a great exercise for you to test what color palette your guitar has. I'm going to use one of my favorite chords, the major seventh movable chord shape, starting with the fifth string root. 
So first what we'll do is we will play a C major 7 chord shape, C, E, G, B. And we will be going from tosto to mezzo and ponticello positions to compare the different colors. Notice the different character and quality of sounds as you are changing positions. As you can see, if we get too close to the bridge, the sound could be quite thin, but if you're playing very fast passages or in different positions with tosto, the sound could get muddy or unclear. So let's use that same movable chord shape, and we will hear first, first position, then fifth, and then ninth position. So we're going to use this first position movable chord, which is B flat major seven, tosto. Mezzo. And ponticello. Next, we will be doing fifth position, which is a D major seven. position, which would be the F-sharp major 7 chord. The colors become more intense as the string length is shorter. So if you notice, the tosto position was very sweet and mellow when I was in this ninth position chord shape because that string length is so short compared to down here. So a really great tip that I would like to share is if you are moving up and down the neck, you will want to change your right hand position as you move up, not necessarily equally with the left hand, but if you would like to maintain the same color going up the neck, you will have to make those adjustments. When it comes to painting, this is a representation of how I consider Tosto and Ponticello positions. To me, Tosto is very mellow, it's sweet, it can be romantic, it can be dark, it can be a lot of different emotions that are very deep. So I relate Tosto to the deepest colors, blue and purple. The mezzo or the middle position right near the rosette under the sound hole, I consider a neutral position, which in my mind is related to green. Neutral, green means go. So that uh, color can really go either way, closer to red, closer to purple. Lastly, the ponticello position is a very bright, lively, energetic sound, and I relate that to reds and yellows, some with a lot of energy like the sun. So this is one representation that you can think of your different positions through different colors. The more you understand your music, the richer your interpretation will be. In order to start to apply color, we first must look at the foundational elements of the music. Color and tone help communicate and accentuate your ideas, but the player must understand style, structure, line, which is melody and harmony, dynamics, mood, character, and the rhythm and meter of the piece. Color choices uh, allow for contrast in your music, and contrast helps to create drama, suspense, intrigue, uh, surprise, and really does give direction to your music. It's really the icing on the cake. 
but you do need to have a very delicious cake in order to appreciate that icing. Mm -hmm. So first, let's try cicato. If you really want to go the full length and experiment in every position, you will find even more varieties. So for instance, staccato in first position, fifth, ninth, tasto. And now, same thing, but legato, first neutral. Tasto. Ponticello. As you will notice, each has its own character and it has its own feel. And the amount of time that is needed for staccato, legato, long and short, that all should be taken into account depending on which position you're playing in. Because sometimes it is harder to play in a color in certain positions. So keep that in mind. Just be aware of any tension that you may or may not have as you're playing. Let's see what staccato and legato notes look like with different articulations with our paintbrush. Da, 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 da. Now what happens if I increase the flexion of this tip joint of the brush? Because the longer flexion um, takes more time, it doesn't quite work with the staccato stroke. That's the same exact thing with the guitar as well. Okay. Now let's see what staccato might look like with a very, very fast, or if barely at all, flexion. There's less contact of the paintbrush when I am doing a very fast flexion. I get less. If you think about it in the same way with your tip joint, this can help you make some informed decisions about your playing. For a legato, I'm thinking I want them long and connected together with as little space as possible in between. No, no. In this one, I wasn't really considering any sort of flexion, and I was just first trying out my paintbrush. If you notice, I'm getting different shapes as a result. So now let's be a little bit more methodical so we can try to get more consistency between our strokes, just like guitar. Okay, so first what we're going to do is a neutral or mezzo um, in between long and short when it comes to the flexion. Generally more consistent. I did have to switch sides of my paintbrush to get enough color um, to finish and that is why there is that little discrepancy <laughs> in shape in that particular spot. However, you might consider something like this to happen with your guitar. For instance, this might be a spot where you were changing positions. Yeah, and then you would have to maybe adjust. Now let's think about a long flexion and see what kind of result that gives us.
So in this case, I'm actually seeing more consistency. If you notice, there is definitely a difference in thickness when it comes to that flexion, which actually gave me more consistent results with my legato sounds. I would say it's very similar with guitar playing as well. I think legato, long, that gives you more room to breathe and also being able to do longer follow throughs and flexions. Staccato, you don't always have that time, as you can see, that can lead to less control. Last but not least, let's just try the staccato. It was harder for me to connect those strokes as the other examples. If I want legato, I want all of those to be connected together. So like guitar, a fast flexion when you are trying to do legato will give you a really particular picture and sound. Keep that in mind as you are working. All of this understanding will help give your music expression and direction. Pay attention to and adhere to all the composer's directions and articulation, little dots for staccato or slur markings for legato. In conclusion, I hope this gives you some new ideas to explore with your music.